to uh, session number four, which is going to include, again, impression taking, not only impression and duplicating what we just created. We just created the crown preparation of tooth number 30. We also took care of, some of us took care of a nice inlay preparation on either tooth numbers two or tooth number 31. So today, we're going to stay on that side with our impression taking. We're going to make a duplicate of what we just done. And our attention to detail is now going to go up another notch, all right? And the reason is because we want to be able to transfer now that information to a model, which is made of stone. And that model has chemistry built into it. And we're going to talk about what stone has and, and why is it so important that we have to have this first step done properly. When I take an impression of a tooth that I just created in the mouth. I have to naturally take care of the saliva, the blood, the gum tissue. We're not gonna cover all that in this lecture, okay? You'll hit that in dental school. But what our prep course is gonna cover is the dynamics of your impression, the margins, the proximal contacts, the bite, the occlusion. We're gonna capture all that in one impression. It's called a dual arch impression technique, and it uses a material called polyvinyl siloxane. Big words, it's a plastic. And it takes about six minutes to set. So one of your team members is going to play doctor today. The other one is going to play assistant. And then you're going to reverse your roles and do just the opposite. Within six minutes, you'll have your impression, and then we'll take you to the next step. All right, so again, do large impression taking. It's not a, it's no big science to it, okay? It's very simple. There'll be a tray. The tray is going to look like this. It's going to have a little mesh in the middle, and you'll have a rim all the way around, and the handle. Just make sure the handle is to the outside, not the inside, but the outside. You'll see it has a little curve to it. When you put that in place and have them bite down, it stays in place. Now I'll just demonstrate this and we'll, we won't use this one, but you're playing the doctor and the assistant. One is going to retract the cheek, the other one is you know, going to be looking at the prep. Then you'll load your impression. There's going to be a heavy body impression material, which is in one of the guns. Okay, It's green. This one happens to be green. Another one, yeah, they're both green, so you won't mix that up. The light body, which the doctor will, will use, is an orange material. So your job today as a doctor, you're going to be injecting around the tooth preparation, 360 degrees once, 360 degrees again. So it's 720 times, okay? 720 degrees all around the tooth. The assistant is going to be squeezing the material in the tray on both sides so that it's completely covered on both sides. She or he's going to hand it to you. You're going to put it in place. So, and you're going to hold your mannequin or your type of don together. Physically hold it together with your hands for six minutes until it's set. Once it's set, you'll pull it out and you'll bring it over to the microscope and you're going to examine it. And you're going to make sure that you don't have any bubbles. You want it to be bubble free. So that's why we're injecting it twice all the way around. In the mouth, in real life, you're drying off that area, making sure they're dry, they're isolated with cotton rolls. And you're making sure saliva is not in there because you want a, a, a completely dry environment, okay, sealed. So you'll read the impression. Once you do that, we're ready for the next step. Okay, so you'll bring it back to our laboratory setup. So let's go back there now, all right? And I'll show you what we do with this impression. since I just pulled this impression out of the mouth. came out of the mouth. Uh, I have my tooth preparation here. You're going to find that some of them are also going to have the inlay uh, right next door to it on this side. So this would be 30 and 31. And on the other side, it's going to be the other inlay preparation on tooth number two. Now, what I want to talk about first is how are we going to make a model of this? How are we going to make an articulator and, and put it all together? So we have our impression. 
and you're more than welcome. These are all sterile. You can actually take a look at these. Or actually, some of them are real mouth. Some of them aren't. You can look at those. And these are out. Here's one that's a full arch. We won't cover that today with the impression. But these, notice the handles are all on the outside, not on the inside of the preparation. Very important. Okay. So we're going to assemble our articulating system called the WOW system together. And basically, when you're done with those, you can just set them on the table. All right, so now, step one is we're going to assemble our articulator together because we want to be able to make, our goal is to be able to make an articulator that works, that we can see our temporary crown on and our die, and we're going to be able to take the die out. These are all pinned in there. Be able to take this all apart and be able to finally see the end result, which is making the temporary crown, which we're going to do next week, and fit that to the die. All right. So we talked about margins. We talked about having enough room for your material. It's very important. And we talked about you know what is this all going to do for the patient? How are they going to be comfortable with this? So in your mind, you know, our goals, if we meet our goals here, and we go in the mouth, everything is going to fall into place nicely. So you're going to play laboratory technician today. And, and believe me, you will get hit with a lot of this in dental school, which is a good thing. All right, so how do we assemble the WOW system together before we look at our impression? We have two pieces, an upper and a lower, and they all are made the same. You want to flip them so that the parts are this way, not up this way. Down on the table, line them up simply like that. There's a ball and a little insert next to each other. So you've got uh, one, two, three, two ball and uh, an insert. Just push down straight on the table like that. You'll hear it snap. And now you have a segment. Okay, now it's not going to sit parallel completely with each other. It's just not made that way. And that's a good thing because you need room in here for your impression. Imagine. Your impression was taken, and now you've got to put that right in between so that you've got enough room on the bottom, not like this, but like that, and a lot of room on the top. You need material in between, and I'll explain why in a minute. So we have our articulator ready, but we're not ready to line it up with our impression. First thing we have to do is let's try to get an idea. Well, we know we have to have movable parts. We've got to have pins that go in place. And so the system does come with pins that are all identical. So we'll take three of those out. Who here has worked in a lab or has worked with a dentist with any of this, this type of stuff or has looked at a, uh, uh, a system that's pinned from a lab? Has anybody? Uh, so this is all actually new to you guys. OK. Um, let me back up a second, not to confuse anybody, but when you receive a lab from your dental lab, it's usually in a nice little container like this, and you're, you're all kind of like, wow, this is great, I can get this back, and it's, it's you know, hopefully everything fits. So they give you a, a, a little die like that, that fits in a model, like this. And there's your impression, and there's one more thing that's included, it's called a solid model. So. <coughs> Not only are we going to create the articulator, but we're also going to have an extra model called a solid model. That'll be the last thing that we do with your final impression today. So I'll leave that out. So anyway, that's so now we're going to do everything the laboratory technician would do. So let's go back to your impression. Now we're going to mark on our impression three spots for where the pin is going to line up. And so I, I do want it to line up with my impression, so I'll mark that one first. So I do want my pin to go directly underneath that one. So here's a pristine articulator. So try to get an idea where that's going to go. So I'm lining it up. I want it right in the middle. So why not just put your pin there? Put it right in the middle. Now there's a serrated side. And there's a, a smooth side. So that's where it's going to go. And I'm just doing this right now just to get an, a ballpark an idea. Oh. Oh, yes. There we go. Thank you. All right. So your prep goes over that, right? Easy enough. Look at it. 
but don't trust your your mind this time you gotta trust your eyes so you gotta look sure that's right in there bullseye right in the middle of your pro very important okay still it's not the complete answer mark it make sure you're aligned so that you don't miss because if you do miss what's going to happen kind of goes off to the side and you end up you have to redo it and that puts you behind I don't have any of those here but you, you end up when you saw it out you want that pin to be right in the middle all right if it's off to the side then the die is going to move around and it'll be wobbly and it won't work get my glasses off this thick stuff it's okay so again, now we have another tooth, it's the inlay tooth. So again, you're gonna mark the middle of that. Now this one doesn't have the inlay and the impression, but then you, what you'll do is you'll kind of estimate that mark, you'll line up this one, you'll, you'll get the pen again and you'll mark it. Looks like we're gonna be right next door, right about there. By the way, you can also mark the whole spot once you have it, and that'll help you um, visualize. See what that do, or am I going to be a little off? So you look down there again. Does that look right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's good to you. Okay. So why not just mark it? Okay. So now you know where that one is. Again, lining this up is important. So once you do that, we got one more to do, and then you're done. Now I don't have anything anterior or mesial of my preparation. Okay, so I do want to get somewhere around the two bicuspids. So I'm going to take this, look at it again, and just say, okay, I think what he meant was I want to get in between the two bys because I want enough of my pin in there to take care of that segment. So I'm going to move it a little bit further, and I'm going to move it down to here. Let's see if that, that'll work for me. like we're right in the middle. Does that look good to you? Right in the middle of the bicuspids. Yeah. yeah. So that would be good. So you can actually leave that there now. It does help because it gives you a little more room. So when you're sawing out your dies and getting them into pieces, you're not going to be running into it.